Okay then, so in the last lesson, we made this text field widget and added an unchanged argument which fires this function every time the value in the text field changes. And in turn, that updates some state to store that value. But there's also another way to keep track of what a user types into a text field without having to use this unchanged function to keep manually updating the state. And that is to use something called a text editing controller. So a text editing controller is something that can hook into a text field widget and automatically keep track of whatever text file you get entered into it. And then at whatever point in time in the future, maybe when a user submits the form, we can access the text value tracked by that controller. So let's give this a quick go then. So the first thing I want to do then is actually get rid of a few things over here. First of all, we don't need this unchanged function anymore because we won't be using that to track the value. So get rid of that. And also this bit of state up at the top, we don't need that. And then finally down here, since we don't have that state anymore, we can't output it. So let's get rid of that as well. So the next thing we need to do is make a text editing controller and hook that up to this text field. So let's come to the top of the widget to do that right here. We'll say final and then text editing controller is the type and we'll call this underscore email controller like so. I'm just going to close this to give us more room and we'll set that equal to a text editing controller like so. All right, so we have that now created. We just need to assign this to the text field. So I'm going to copy it, the name of this variable head down here and inside a text field, we have a controller argument and we can set that equal to this email controller. And now this email controller is hooked up to this text field. So under the hood, it will track whatever we type into this thing over here. So then we just need to access it at some point because at the minute, if we just type in here, yes, it's tracking it, but we have no way of knowing what the value is or getting that value yet. So what I'm going to do is actually create a button down here. And in fact, before that, we'll do another sized box to give us some room. And the height of this will be 20 pixels. Now, after that, we're going to create a filled button. And inside here, we need two things. So the first thing, oops, not a full stop at the end, a comma. The first thing we need is the on pressed handler function. And that's going to be an empty function for now. We'll come back to that in a second. Then we need a child. And this is going to be a text widget. So const text. And then inside here, we'll just say print, not pint, print the email. All right. So inside this function, what I'm going to do is print to the console the value that's being stored now inside this email controller. So how do we access that? Well, first of all, we'll say print. Then we'll take the email controller. So email controller. Then Dot, and we have access to a text property. And that is whatever text is being stored inside this thing right here. So at this moment in time, when we click on the button, it will take the text currently inside this text field and it will print that. Now, what I'm going to do is use the trim method on this to get rid of any white space as well. And that's pretty much it, my friend. So now what we could do is save this and you can see that button over here. I'm going to open up this console and you can see in the debug console over here, we should see the email address when I click on the button. So Mario at netninja.dev, right? Then when I click on the button, watch over here, print the email and we can see Mario at netninja.dev. All right then. So we've seen now how to gather user input using this text field widget. And we've done that in a couple of different ways. The first way was to use the unchanged function to manually update some state to match the value inside the text field. The second way, which we've just done was to assign the text field, a text editing controller, which also tracked and stored the value inside the text field. And then we could access the text property on that at a later point in time. So both of these approaches make use of this text field widget and are completely fine and pretty simple to use. However, there is another way we can work with form fields and managing form field values and state, and that is to use a form widget. And then within that form widget, we can use a bunch of different form field widgets that offer us a little bit more functionality like validation and error feedback. So we're going to start by making that form widget in the next lesson.